Hello, everyone. This week on It Came From Gen X, we discussed the Moana Loa uh, volcano gaslighting. Have you heard it? If so, don't do it. We discussed the Ohio State Michigan debacle, as we would call it. Uh, Whitney Houston, number one. We tend to disagree. Listen, listen to us. Movies you haven't seen. You'll be shocked to hear some of those movies that were listed. Uh, with that being said, here we go. And it came from Janet's video. Hey, everybody, welcome to it. Came from Gen X. I am Keith Porter with my bestest buddies in the entire world. That's pretty sad. <laughs> I can't find any better friends, but uh, this is who I'm stuck with my man. The Fish, Brian Fisher, and my dude, the Skin Bow, Michael Skinner. Welcome to It Came From Gen X, our show looking at life through the eyes of Gen Xers, uh, sports, music, world news, and pop culture. We hope that you enjoy this little trek with us. And let's say hello to the fella, Skin Bow, man. Good to have you healthy again, brother. How are you? I'm doing better. Uh, nice bout with the flu and... Got that behind me. We uh, had a good weekend. You know our beloved well, Buckeyes. Wait, wait, wait. Sort of a good weekend. You had to sit well, next to me and, and even cry our beloved on Saturday. Buckeyes laid a fat egg in the second half. Yeah. We still had a good weekend. Um, family, friends. I still call it a good weekend. I call it a great weekend, too. We're alive. Uh, you and I got to hang together and watch that debacle. That was nice. Which uh, mm-hmm. Fish could have been there, but it's all good. Fish, what's going on, brother? How are you? Doing well, sir. Thank you. Nice long Thanksgiving weekend. So mm-hmm. it's all family, friends, all that. So very, very nice time. And um, uh, went to the Browns game yesterday up in Cleveland with uh, Jim Surma, Annie, and B. Nice, uh, nice time up there. Oh, great got seats, a good great win. game. Yeah, great game. Uh, and good news today. My my daughter and her boyfriend put an offer in for a condo, and uh, looks like they're accepted. So. Changing life, growing up. I know you guys have some 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 things to say about that as well. So yeah, yeah. So it's good to see our kids growing up doing well. Uh, if you get a chance, ask Peyton how many bedrooms she got. I'm looking for <laughs> rent a room. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's at least three. That's like yeah, God right. dang. Yeah, yeah that they yeah. got like a pool or a pond or whatever. You know, <laughs> a pond would be good for you. <laughs> right, it's just the right okay. size. Yes, they do grow up on us. I've had an extraordinary week. Um, my son got engaged on Wednesday night, um, to a wonderful young lady. She's, uh, she's already been a part of the family and, and her family is wonderful. So congratulations to Steele and Amber. Uh, I'm so happy, uh, for those guys. And, uh, I am looking forward to being a father-in-law who would have thunk it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, got to see my ex-wife, uh, Marianne, who she's, she's just wonderful. And, uh, we had a great time together. A lot of, a lot of talking, a lot of love, a lot of laughs. And, of course, Thanksgiving was marvelous, too, which we thought it was going to be a crying fest. The first one without my mom. There was a lot of anxiety and apprehension built up, and it was nothing of the sort. It was just the best time. Uh, probably 30 people packed in that house, and we had the greatest time together. So, God, I couldn't wait to get back to the gym last night. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Oh, just out of shape, eating all kinds of junk. And uh, got back on track last night, so let's get this show back on track again. And uh, I'm excited to uh, to be here with you fellas. So, by the way, I saw pictures of Mary, and I'm like, it's, it harkens back to how, what, how, what happened? <laughs> how did you, you pull that off back? How did you, yeah, yeah, how oh, did yeah. You pull her? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's real simple, guys. Let me break it down to you. <laughs> They go to the bathroom, you pull a little... No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, well, it all worked out great. 
yeah. Yeah, and it worked yeah. out great in the end. So, you know, no charges and uh, <laughs> got a son out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a kid go. out of it. So, yeah, it worked there out pretty go. good. Yeah. Uh, you guys know me, man. I ain't got time for ugly women. You get them anytime. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, man, big ups coming up for my man, Skinner's son, Michael Skinner Jr. Uh, big, big day coming up for him. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to send a shout out to him, tell him I love him, I'm proud of him. You are going to nail this, my man. Don't you worry about it. Take a big breath and uh, in enjoy the moment. And uh, if Skinner wants to talk about it, I'll let him talk about it more. But uh, also to our man, Des, the reason, um, definitely in my top five rappers. That includes all of them. So uh, just big ups to you, my brother. And Fish, tell them where they can find the show, and let's get this party going. All right. So you, you might be listening to us on demand on your favorite podcast platform. We can be found out there on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music. Just pull up your podcast platform of choice. Find the It Came From Gen X podcast. Give us a subscribe or follow. And as we publish new episodes weekly, they'll pop in your feed free of charge. Listen to us on the go or what the heck you're doing out there. Uh, if you have a smart speaker, you can ask your speaker to play the It Came From Gen X podcast. And she will do that for you at the comfort of your home. You might be watching us, as Keith mentioned, on the Boss Code Media TV network. Uh, find the app on your smart TV or your portable device. <laughs> Download Excuse the app. Sorry, give no. us a subscribe there. And we're on there with uh, on our very own channel. It came from Gen X channel with a lot of other creative content out there, cooking and music and all kinds of original content out there that does this uh, uh, actively promoting and partnering with, which we're happy to be a part of as well. And our YouTube channel at It Came From Gen X. Full episodes there, segments and other things on our channel. Give us a subscribe while you're over there as well. All show information can be found in two main places. Our link tree page is Google link tree. It came from Gen X. It's simply a page with links to our social media and all good stuff there. And our website, it came from Gen X, one word, dot wordpress, dot com. And again, show, all show information is there. Links to where you can listen, links to new episodes, videos, bios, and ways you can support the show with our Patreon account and uh, podcast page if you are inclined to do so. Uh, if you do one thing, give us a like, share, subscribe, follow, tell a friend. That's how we grow out there, and we greatly appreciate your support. Thank you. Yes, we do. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. And we appreciate uh, some of the listeners that uh, have contacted me in the last week. Thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, thank you so much, Joel, and, and uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Appreciate all you guys. All right, man, let's get this thing cooking. Somebody's got to get up early in the morning. And, uh, you know, he's doing all that fussing, and it was his idea for me to, you know, change some things. So <laughs> go ahead. let's start with yeah, some world news. For, forgive me for trying to get some good audio going audio. Yeah, next now you know better. All right. <laughs> uh, before we uh, go to my first story, I do want to touch on a uh, very important weekend coming up for us here in the Skinner family. Uh, my oldest, uh, our producer, our boss, Michael Skinner Jr., is getting married uh, ah! in the wonderful little town of Carrollton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> People coming from all over the all over the U.S. To, you know, literally uh, embarking on little Carrollton, Ohio, on Saturday for this. So <clears throat> I know he's been stressed out up beyond belief over the last few weeks, especially, but. Uh, we're all we're all here with you, son. It's gonna turn out great, and you've got Uncle Keith there up there in front with you. I got your back. master of ceremonies, uh, so I have no qualms with uh, anything going wrong. Yeah, and we, firm, so, we firmly expect the the this episode will be 
edited and, and ready to go right on time. <laughs> Prior no. to yeah. correct, no, yes. th- this is not an excuse, Junior. You no. better have this. Re- yeah, getting married. <laughs> Any- anybody can do that. <laughs> the wedding will start uh, 15 minutes later while audio is uh, being finished. Yeah. Have uh, your laptop yeah. in the back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened that the three of us produce great kids mm. that are getting either engaged or married, and great relationships? Well, how did that happen, guys? Just, I don't know. I don't know because they we they didn't sure as hell didn't learn from us. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, Marianne and I were sitting there talking about all the crazy crap we did. Think we don't want Steel to ever know about some of it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's just awesome, man. Um, I am so looking forward to that. Now, that's going to be another great event. I love this time of year. There's just all kinds of good events going on, and then you throw in a wedding. Uh, of loved ones in the middle of it. Uh, It's just really going to be a nice holiday season. Uh, Mm -hmm. I just want to point out one thing. I am just truly honored. Uh, As I said before, these are two of my best friends in the world, uh, minus uh, John and Amy Cooper. But uh, it's just been a real honor to be such an intricate part of the the Skinner family. Um, I was blessed to uh, do the ceremony, lay his mom to rest. I was blessed to marry uh, his, his daughter, and I'm going to marry his son. And uh, that's just really awesome to me. So I just want to say thank you. And I am really honored. All right. Okay. Plus his rates are cheap. That's, yeah. They, that's rates. true. Rates. Friends of family rates. discount. I ain't got paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> rates. That's funny. Okay, no, just kidding. All right. Skinner World News, buddy. All right. So before this gets derailed, let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's head out to Hawaii and uh, let's do it. Last mm-hmm. couple of days, the world's largest volcano, uh, Moana Loa, uh, erupted for the first time since 1984. Mm-hmm. Now, before I saw the story, I didn't realize that Hawaii, of all places, has the largest volcano on the planet, which is fascinating to me. I have you um, paid attention to school, you'd have known that, but go ahead. That's just me. maybe so. But uh, <laughs> what I do need to report is the lava flow is not threatening the downslope communities from the uh, volcano, so nobody's in danger, uh, which is a great thing. I, you know, um, so when I read the story and I thought about it, you know, first of all, I think about the people in the area, make sure that they're all safe. Then it go, went back to 1980 may 18th 1980 when mount st helens blew Mm -hmm. i was nine years old at the time and i remember it like it was yesterday 15 57 people died the ash cloud from the explosion was 15 miles high and it encircled the entire globe that's how high and how much ash i remember them talking about the ash you know, making it just to us here in Ohio from out there in in Northern Oregon. So when it came to Ohio, that was a huge thing, but it actually encircled the entire globe. And there's also another one out, out West where I, where I was stationed uh, in the military, where Michael was born, Mike Jr. was born in Mount Rainier. You guys have heard of me talk about it before. It's, Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an active volcano. It hasn't erupted since 1894, but it's just a matter of time. You know, with the crazy way global warming and all the crazy crap that's going on around the world, it's just a matter of time before that could possibly blow and all the communities that are around that particular mountain range as well. So something to look forward to. But do you guys remember Mount St. Helens? I know we were pretty young, but that was a pretty huge... And it, one other thing I want to say is, if you guys remember, the closest thing we had to a volcano in Ohio, uh, especially in Kenmore, is when the Bell Baptist Temple blew up. You guys remember when that happened? There was ash in our backyard there on 18th Street from that explosion. Hmm. So that was the closest that. thing that we could have as far as experiencing what these folks around Mount St. Helens and what the folks there in uh, Hawaii are experiencing. Wow. May I tell you? I remember Mount St. Helens um, because that was an extraordinary picture on the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'll just never forget that. And imagine that was before the internet. Yeah, yeah. You can imagine that. 
Um, me personally, I was too young to really try to breathe in the impact of it. Of course, you, you can't imagine it fully unless you're there. But being older now, when I think about the things that that uh, the thing that scares us the most are the things we have no control over, or the things that make us feel real small, like you know, an over overbearing body of water, you know, something like that. So can you imagine just the entire sky covered? There's no clear daylight anywhere. There's no clarity anywhere. And ash has fallen. That had to be really, really horrific. Um, I'm just curious of where we are technology-wise, far as predicting uh, you know, a volcano erupting. And I know you got to live somewhere, but why would anybody want to live near one? You know, that that's another question, if, if avoidable. So I don't know, man. That's just that's a scary thought. Because that how do all the stupid stuff man comes up with, man, nothing is scarier, more unpredictable than nature. I hear you. Good words. Fish. Yeah, we haven't seen that much ash, uh, Skinner's uh since uh you know Keith's elbows. No, oh, yeah. No, I was, I was going to know. say I haven't seen that much ash. <laughs> me and Skinner went swimming at the net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a sight for sore eyes, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, no, I remember back in nineteen. My my dad subscribed to National Geographic for years when I was a kid, so I remember getting that, looking through those pictures in his, one of those magazines back then, and yeah, it was extraordinary. Like I said, it was a thing where it's like, wow, this actually happened in the United States. I mean, you 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 see those just type of disasters happening yeah. elsewhere uh, when it hit home like that it was I remember even as a kid being kind of uh, interested and fascinated by that and uh um yeah i mean i i'm glad yeah. no one got hurt with this last eruption i've seen i think i've now that you mentioned it, i have seen some of the footage of the lava flow and that's just incredible just yeah, incredible yeah. to see that force yeah go ahead yeah good, i was gonna say good point uh fish you know when you Think of it, you think of Pompeii or places like that. Right. You never think of, of home. But uh, two things I want to point out. Um, number one, like the last eruption that I witnessed was Eddie Van Halen ripping it off in concert yeah. uh, <laughs> for the first Van Halen album. And two, you were not looking at National Geographic for a volcano picture, so you could try selling that one somewhere else. So, I, oh no, you were looking for a little bit of, <laughs> you know, nudity in those. Absolutely, you know. It's, uh, he was scouring <laughs> through those like the J.C. Penny catalog. Oh, there's, there's an National <laughs> Geographic. I wonder if any volcanoes are in here. <laughs> so you kids listening out there, we had to hunt for pictures yes. and movies. We, we had, had to we had work to, for it, yeah. yeah. We definitely had to work for it. There's no question the about Sears that. Sears catalog, J.C. Penny catalog. Whatever you can get, baby. Yep. <laughs> 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 yep. Oh, that's funny. Uh I wonder if there are any volcanoes in here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you might sell that on convincing idiots, man, but that ain't gonna that ain't gonna fly here, brother. <laughs> oh, there are some nice mountain peaks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, Look at gosh. the lava flow on that one. Yeah, that's, Africa. That's, that's, that's nice. There's an Africa, Africa issue. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to study it here. A little extra harder. Yeah. Okay, uh, wow. Yep. All right, what else you got, Skinner? Uh, one other th real quick. Um, the term gaslighting is the number one sought-out word in the Webster Merriam Dictionary in 2022. Now, it was pretty big back in the 80s, too, with our friend John Cooper. And I still, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of gaslighting going on too. Well, you looked up gaslighting yeah. there, you had his picture there just cheating. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with a, like a lighter. <laughs> yes, with a big a blue, <laughs> blue flame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, gaslighting, it's a psychological manipulation of a person, usually over an extended period of time, that causes the victim to question the validity of their own thoughts or beliefs or their perception of reality. So, Someone who verbally, emotionally abuses another human being is what the term is called gaslighting. Gaslighting. Um, it's it's a heinous tool used by abusers in relationships. And here's an interesting thing: politicians and newsmakers. 
It's what caught my eye when I was reading this. Politicians and newsmakers use the ter- use the tool gaslighting to get their points across. Mm-hmm. Government politicians should not be using this whatsoever. And then shame on the news the news feeds that you read or watch every single day that they want their agenda out there for you to believe. So yeah, it's not it's it's not far fetched that when I was reading this article that the politicians and newsmakers were involved in along with the abusers that uh that the word is used for. So I'm sure you guys have heard the term before. Did you realize oh, yeah. it was such a predominant term, especially even today in 2022? Um, I did. I mean, I I hear it a lot, you know. It was one of those buzzwords that are around lately. You know, I, I knew what it was, you know, a while ago when you mentioned it in posts. I had to look it up again and remind myself. So I wasn't like familiar, familiar with it that I could just tell you what it meant without being reminded through Google. Um, I don't understand why it's such a prevalent term now. That's I think that's the question. Why is it such a prevalent term now? Because there's nothing new. All it is is psychological, mental manipulation. Mm-hmm. That's that's all it is. So um what makes it gaslighting now? Is it the application of social media? Is you know what is it that makes it? We have to have a term gaslighting now, uh, manipulating people uh, psychologically and emotionally. These are things that have been going on in a while. Whether you want to accuse the government of doing it, uh, people in relationships are doing it. Uh, I'm just curious why we have gaslighting now. Where where does that come from? So that's my biggest question. Fish? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. I, I, there's some. Let's see. The word was brought to life more than 80 years ago with a gaslight. A, with gaslight, excuse me, it was a 1938 play by Patrick Hamilton. So there you go. So apparently it was a practice in that play that the, the phrase came from. But but you're right. I mean, the, 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 the practice, unfortunately, is nothing new. It's just the, the terminology that to describe it, you know, just, you know, I don't know. What struck me is it's just the new words that continue to make their way into our culture with social media use yeah. and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, as far as the act I, itself, obviously it's a very heinous act. It's, you know, you shouldn't do it to other people. I've been doing it to you guys for years as far as. Well, we don't, we caught on. You know, we, we you know, know, we trying, know. To, trying to make a successful podcast. It hasn't worked yet, but. Uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> we've, yeah. caught, we've caught on. Um, yeah. You know, we, well, I brought up the term uh, of catfishing before the show started. And I certainly think that that is a form of gaslighting, or gaslighting is a form of that, if you will. You think of the uh, situation years ago with Manti Teo, which we talked about mm-hmm. a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. Um, he certainly was mentally manipulated um so i wonder if that would qualify but um i think right now there's a lot of this going on with weak-minded people i think that's why all of our not all but most of our shooters and people that walk into places like you know classrooms and malls and do stuff like that uh you know, I think there's a lot of mental manipulation going on with those type of people. And it's the combination. You get the right combination of, you know, messages and movies and music and drugs and food and water, you know, all these sorts of things. And you, you can trigger the right person to be mentally manipulated. So I don't know, man. I, I'm just curious to where we're going with this with this thing and why is this so not the act, but the term is so prevalent today. Good question. I hope it goes away. I don't think it ever will, but at least the prevalence of the term will subside at least a little bit. Uh, world will be a better place if that's the case, if that does happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, maybe the, maybe the terminology and the awareness like this, maybe it does help some people 
become more self-aware as some of the stuff gets talked about to where they maybe they stop and think are they potentially being is it gas lit that, or a gas lighted by their partner and maybe it makes them think about a few things that's a great positive way to look at it Vish. yeah that's you know awareness could be part of it too absolutely yeah. all right very good all right, man. Thanks, Skinner. Uh, that's an interesting subject. See where where that goes, man. The top word looked up. That's really interesting. Um, but welcome to uh, Earth. <laughs> this place welcome is to twenty twenty two. Yeah, man. This place is crazy. All right, guys. Let's get on with some sports and music. <laughs> Music world. Uh, well, you know what? I tell you what, let's start with sports because we are in this great state of Ohio, as uh, many of our listeners know, both of you. And uh, we are <laughs> hurting, hurting what is known as the game took place. Um, so you're hearing this show a week later, but uh, so I'll say last week uh, for us, it was uh, yesterday. The game, the Ohio State Buckeyes versus that team up north, or some of you know, is the Michigan Wolverines. And we took it, man. We took it on the chin. And this is the second year in a row under Coach Ryan Day, who has really had a lot of praise. The team has lost an average of one game a year under his uh, tutelage, if you will. Unfortunately, two of those years have been the Michigan game. Uh, we looked great in the Rose Bowl last year, uh, dominated that game. A lot of players had breakout games we thought would be Heisman candidates this year. Unfortunately, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, who was counted to be the best wide receiver in all of football, didn't play after the first game because of injury, and that's really sad. And then, of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. emerged as the best wide receiver in the game. So, I mean, with all that being said, you would think we were certainly on our way to either win a national championship or at least play for one. And um, those dreams aren't over, but they have certainly been derailed seriously. I just want to ask you guys your thoughts. What is it? Why are we losing to Michigan under Ryan Day these last two years? Fish? Uh, well, just not been well. The run game is that's huge too. I mean, they've not been able to successfully stop the run game last two years, and the and this game this past Saturday, it was a game of big plays. They had no answer to Michigan's big plays. You know, pass downfield. It was it was like one on one coverage. I don't know. I, just, it, it, it just seemed like they yeah. were not prepared. It, it did not have the adjustments either. No, to, they didn't make the adjustments. And, and yeah. Normally, we've made great adjustments at halftime in close games. That did not happen this uh, this past weekend. And the funny thing about it, you talked about the big plays uh, and stopping the run. We completely shut down their run. Their top player, Corum, did not play. Uh, we shut their run down completely. And uh, – the, the scouting report on Michigan was they can't throw the deep ball. They can't complete the deep ball. And that's what they burned us on. I don't mm -hmm. know why we had this single high safety man coverage deal and made no adjustments, and we got burned on it on several occasions. It's two for big touchdowns. Um, so it's really weird that we made them one-dimensional, and the dimension that they had was a dimension that they said they weren't good at, and that's what they killed us on. So I don't know, man. This is crazy. Any thoughts, uh, Skinner? I know you had a lot of thoughts yesterday. Well, yeah, no. Or Saturday. I, I, yeah, I did. It, you know, they just wanted it more than Ohio State did. In the, in the uh, simple. Real good point. Real good point. You know, they seemed like a different football team, didn't they? Yeah, just I mean, mean we, nasty, hungry. Was a good first half for both teams, and then the second half, the Ohio State just laid a big fat egg. I mean, there's no way around it. I, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of soul searching myself being an avid Buckeye fan that I am. And I don't know if there's any relevance to it, but the, some say that the rivalry doesn't mean as much to Ryan day because he's not from Ohio. I, and it, there was a list that I had seen, you know, you've got coach urban Meyer, coach Trestle, coach Woody Hayes, uh, 
Coach Bozenbucker, all these guys are from let, Ohio. Let me tell you something. That absolutely has everything to do with it. Look at the comment C.J. Stroud said. Oh, this game doesn't define us. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it he, does yeah, define he, you. He it, absolutely it, misspoke, uh, misspoke it, on that one. Tell me about sure. Look at this. You had a Heisman Trophy and a Big Ten championship in your hands, and you don't have them because of this one game. Mm-hmm. You had them wrapped up. So don't tell me that. And you are absolutely right that the fact that he's not from Ohio, I think, makes a huge difference. Look at the first things that uh, Trestle said when he took the job at the uh, the rally. All he cared about was beating Michigan. Yeah. So um, it is a big deal of that because you grow up with the with the hatred. You grow up with the competitiveness. When you have coaches that jump from job to job, I mean, think about it. You got the job at uh, at Nebraska. And you're all go to Nebraska and you're wearing Nebraska shirts and jerseys for seven, seven years. You either quit or get offered a better job. Now you're coaching Oklahoma. Now you're, I'm wearing Oklahoma stuff, blah, 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 blah. So it's all a job to you. But when it's inside you, when you're born and raised in a place, you never shake that. You know, you never shake that. And I mm-hmm. think it makes a huge difference. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about bringing back Urban Meyer. Uh, there's a lot of talk about firing Coach Day, and I don't think we're there yet. If he is not willing to make changes, though, I think he needs to be fired. His first well, change he has to do, he's got to bring in an offensive coordinator that calls creative play calling. You can't mm-hmm. fire a coach that's 44 and 5. Well, you yeah, you can. Sure, if you, you, can't win, yeah, you can. Yeah, but if you can't beat Michigan, the heck when you can. When losses are against the team that you have to beat, you know, that's, that's a separate issue. I think think they need to get coach Meyer or coach Trussell in and talk to day about their preparation. He can talk the game all he wants coach day, but if he doesn't feel it, he doesn't have it. Then it's, the play, I've it's, been it's, saying it all year. The play calling has been horrendous and mm-hmm. he cannot have the best wide receiver core in the nation and a, a Heisman trophy leading candidate at quarterback. And our offense looks like that. You cannot have that dude. You know, so well, that is a huge problem. We didn't have great uh, defensive backs all year. Our leading defensive back was hurt. And I'll give a pass on the defense because they were a whole lot better than last year. And I'll give, well, uh, I forgot his name already. Uh, everywhere he goes, he makes the defense better. He's only been there a year. So I'll give him a little bit of slack. But, uh, we, you scored said points to win, but we scored enough points to win on Saturday. Defense Obviously. is what gave up the game in the second half. Now we obviously we just scored up twenty sixteen. We were up twenty seventeen at halftime. We we had enough points to win. Mm, yeah, man, only, scored three, got... only three more in the in the whole second half. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. And that kid that got that penalty, I hope they stress to that kid uh, how uh, big a deal that was. That yeah. changed everything. Momentum is huge in that game. When you get it and you get it at the right time, you better ride it to a touchdown. And we, here we got a bad punt. Our defense made a great stop. And we got the ball at midfield, and you do something stupid like that. That's just shameful, man. I don't like dumb players. He's but, referring uh, hey, to the headbutt on the sidelines after yeah, the play was I, over. Totally ridiculous. Uncalled for. That's oh, something. Remember that somebody that, 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 that the Somebody changed. that don't get it. Yeah, he doesn't get it. So, anyway, uh, guys, is there any other game, and in, in, or and there's going to be a game, any other rivalry that you can think of that merits so much attention? as uh, Ohio State, Michigan. And you know what? It's hard to think of an NFL game because, it, it, you know, teams change so often. They're up and down a lot. Uh, you know, you had the, the Pittsburgh-Cleveland for a while. Uh, for a short while, Pittsburgh and Ravens were great. You always got Green Bay and Dallas and things like that. Baseball is really hard because there's so many games. You play a team so many times you know, throughout the year. Um, So it doesn't have to be any of those major sports, but just any type of a rivalry that you can think of that merits such attention. Skinner, anything on top of your head? Well, you you mentioned baseball. The New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox hate each other. Yeah, that's that's good hate. Yeah, You know, you've got that that there, and you've got the L.A. LA Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants on the uh, West Coast that don't like each other. So those – are, cl- are close, but nothing <laughs> rivals Michigan, Ohio State, and any sports. I don't think 
Well, yeah, you look, at, you, you look at basketball. No, it doesn't have to you, be sports. No, I understand that. I'm just sticking with sports at first. Even back in the 80s when you had the Lakers and the Boston uh, Celtics, I don't think that rivalry compares to the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry in college football. Um, I was trying to think of any type of rivalry in music, and I, uh, nothing comes to mind. I know there's probably something out there. In music. I can't think of anything in music, but you know what? What comes to mind when I think of Ohio State, Michigan? Politics, Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, that well, can't that, be nastier than that. Well, that's just stupidity and silliness, if you ask me. But that's another now, story uh, for another time. Question. What I'm question? How about you, Fish? Anything comes to mind? You know, you mentioned that it's like it just. You're right. It kind of depends on the era. Like you say, just you know, the that heightens that rivalry. In I'm, again, I'm talking about sports. I go back to sports. Sure, that be so. Like there, uh, you know, there was definitely periods of Dallas and San Francisco in the '70s that were big rivalries. Kind of faded out a little bit in the '80s. Of course, you had the big, you know, and then the '90s it, it came back again. Um, you know, like you, you already mentioned, Boston and LA in the '80s. I mean, that was that was the in my opinion, that was the sports rivalry of the decade. Was I would Boston have to agree. LA basketball, I would agree. You know. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with one more that matched that at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 49ers in Dallas. That was the 90s. That's right. But I thought that was just real, really intense. Um, just two teams loaded with future Hall of Famers mm-hmm. uh, duking it out, man, uh, for the same thing, both in the NFC. I thought that was great. And often during that time, the NFC Championship game was better than the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, during, that's, during, that's right. the, during that era. So Definitely was. Okay. All right. So let's hope uh, we can get it together. And with that, I'll just say OH. I-O. I-O. All right. Okay, guys. Also in sports, we got an intriguing story going on right now. Um, man, is, is this is set up for cancel culture if I ever heard one? Um, and that is, of course, the Dallas Cowboy owner Jerry Jones, um, who stays in the news. Um, but right now he's in the news for a picture posted by the Washington Post, um, that shows Jerry Jones standing with a racist mob when he was a teenager in Arkansas. In 1957, blocking the entrance of six black students attempting to desegregate the school. Oh, man, I tell you what, I don't even know where to begin with this one. A lot of feelings. I think it has to be looked at carefully. You can't put things in a in a big box. Um. First, I want to say this. Every player, black player, that I've ever heard talk about Jerry Jones has talked about how he would go through a wall for you. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't think I've seen an owner that loves their players as much as Jerry seems to. Um, not, the, not just talking about the money, uh, but the attention. Uh, I, Pac-Man Jones kept getting into trouble. Now, here's a guy with, with a multi-million dollar contract, but Jerry paid for a bodyguard to go with him everywhere, a chaperone, if you will. Um, the things that he's hidden and swept under the rug of his players have gotten into trouble. That being said, he's never hired a black head coach. He's been questioned about that. Um, upper management, he's never hired a uh, a black person, but that stays in the family. So he's got his sons and his wife and other people working for him. Um, and he's the GM. So we'll, we'll let that pass. But this is 1957. And I would imagine a lot of people, white people, especially in a place like Arkansas, were caught up in the... Uh, feel of the day, if you will, if I can put it that way, that regret it, that have learned from it. 
And I like to think Jerry has too. Don't want to give him a total pass, but where do we draw the line where we're bringing up something from 1957? Uh, and and just ready to crucify a guy. Your thoughts, Fish? What did he? I did he? he I know he issued a statement. I haven't seen his statement. Did you happen to see it? Oh uh, no, I, I, I don't did know not what he said. His okay. statement. Let me see if I can look it up while you're talking. That's fine. I mean, it's like you say, it, it's something that somebody has done. What fifty years ago? Wherever it's been longer than that, fifty-seven. Yeah. Uh, anyway. That's six, 65 years ago. 65 years ago. Thank you very much. So it to me, if 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 you own up to own up to it, don't try to, you know, shy away from it. Uh speak to where you know where your mind was maybe back then and what you've learned since. So you think if you take ownership and really show with your, like you kind of mentioned it already, Keith, your actions more than your words. Uh-huh. That's not something that you stand for, that you learned from that, and you were maybe a dumb, a dumb, dumb younger person. It's not a good look to have it at all, of course. Um, like I said, if you own it, you've shown your actions over the years, that's not what you stand for, then, you know, I think yeah. I think people can be forgiven for past dumb mistakes like that. Well, one thing he said was that he walked up uh, and didn't know what was going on at the moment. Okay. And things like that can happen. I get it. I I get it. But here's my problem. And I think this is the biggest aggression towards white people that claim not to be racist. This is, to me, the most egregious crime that they commit. They've done nothing to fight against it. That's that's always been my issue. Okay, that's great. You're not for it. But have you helped stand up and say something? Because because minorities can say all we want to. But it's going to take other whites to say things to racist whites and say, hey, we're tired of this crap for, for real change to come apart. And it works both ways, okay? But sure. we're, we're talking about it. So uh, I have to ask, what have you done, Jerry, since then? I don't want to talk about the players that you hired because those players brought you, helped bring you championships and games. So I, that's a shared thing. Yeah, you paid a lot of money, but you made a lot of money too. But what have you done since then would be my question. Um, I don't know, man. Skinner, go ahead. Well, we we will never have that answer. He's probably done something public or non, not in the public. Sure, we can get that answer. Your record. Well, yeah, so you you think back 1957, he's a teenager. What has he done since then that would mimic that type of negative behavior? No, no, I'm saying what have you no, done no, to I, no, I'm, I'm, racism? Yeah, no, no, I, I know that. I'm, I'm on to something else. I, I kind of tiptoed around that, and I'm sorry. But what 1957, he stumbles upon this action that makes it look negative to him but since then what has he done that's duplicated that negative inflection of behavior do you understand what i'm saying All right. has so he, done, it, has he yeah. done anything since sure. that time and that's a fair question to ask too yeah so if he's done this behavior more than on one occasion it's harder to forgive or forget all right i'm just trying to keep everything balanced here right and, and, that, and that, hold on, hold on, hold on. That question's fair, but at the same time, it wasn't too long after this photo that Jerry was in the public eye. Okay, he became rich. So, you know, but with that being said, I think especially you start like from the since you had the Cowboys on up, you know, you're right. not going to do a whole lot to mess with your image owning a football team. But you know you're going to have a lot of black players. I'm just trying to be fair. Uh, I'm not playing devil's advocate here, but uh, I, I get what you're saying. That's a fair question to ask too. Fisher, are you going to say something? Or no. I cut you off. I'm sorry, Skinner. Go ahead, buddy. No, no, you're okay. So, I, and that's what I was trying to get is what has he done since then that would make us think that he is this terrible person? 
yeah, or has I done mean, this terrible type of behavior before. I, you all know I'm not a big Jerry Jerry fan. I never have right, been. Right. But to me, I've not seen this type of behavior. At least I'm not aware of this behavior happening before or since, I should say, that would make me think that, yeah, maybe he is a racist bastard. Right. Uh, He's not I tell you given what, that implication. And we start living in a world where people don't get you know, a chance to change or whatever. I mean, we're going to be in a whole lot of trouble, man. We're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. And we can't have this double standard going on either. No, absolutely not. um, You know, one of, you know, the story in the Bible where they were about to stone a woman for adultery. And of course, they wanted to trick Jesus in order to find a reason to arrest him or persecute him. So they thought they would ask him a question, not caring about whether this woman gets stoned or not, but to trick him. And it was like, hey, we found her, you know, uh, him in adultery, and we want to stone her. What, what do you say? Okay, And they thought it was a no-win scenario, because if he says stone her, then, you know, <laughs> and then if he said don't stone her, well, you're saying adultery is okay. And, of course, the brilliant answer he said was, Tell you what, paraphrasing, the first one of you that hasn't sinned, go ahead and throw the first rock. So with that being said, all the people that want to hang him, white or black, if there's any of you that has not said something or got caught up in something, you know, that that would look really bad, whether you tweeted something, whether you were in a group, you know, the first one of you, go ahead and throw the first stone. And I think that's the hypocrisy that bothers me. All these people that want to just cancel somebody immediately. Have you ever done similar stuff or, or got stuff in their closet? That's not, you know, all that. So we'll keep an eye on this story. And, uh, we just want the truth to avail, but the point of it is, it's 1957. Move on, man. If the guy hasn't done anything, like you said, Skinner, to make you even think otherwise of him, let's just move on. Gosh, life's too short for all this. All right. Anyway, uh, I I, I, talk, I wanted to talk about the uh, Kyrie Irving thing, but because of time, I'm just going to say this. Um, and I said to you guys earlier, my point wasn't to talk about Kyrie necessarily, but my point was just to say this because I think it needs to be out there. Uh, if somebody comes to me and asks me what I think about Kyrie Irving, my answer is very simple. I don't want to say another word about Kyrie until you tell me and show me what's happening to Brett Favre. When Brett Favre loses his shoe deal, then you call me. When Brett Favre is forced to take sensitivity classes, then you call me. If Brett Favre is forced to uh, give $500,000 to whatever uh, organization, then you call me. Uh, The double standard is awful, and I think it's just shameful. This man has stolen millions from poor people, and uh, that story came and went away so fast, you forgot it happened. But yet, we're going to keep crucifying this guy for posting a link to a movie in his Instagram. Uh, I think it's really shameful. Uh, Anybody got any thoughts before we move on? Fish? No, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the double standard, is, it is it is a little eye-opening and head-scratching from time to time. So I don't know of any negative, well, repercussions that Brett Favre really has experienced really just yet, if anything, you know, to your point. So yeah, sad. I don't know. Yeah. Anything, anything, Skinner? No, you said it. Couldn't say it any better. All right. Okay, guys, uh, getting out of sports. Um uh, Moving on to music, I was just cruising through some things to this day in music, um, and uh, lost it that fast. But this day in music, the late great Whitney Houston, um, in 1992, on this day, she started a record-breaking 14-week run at number one. And the U.S. singles charts with I Will Always Love You. I think we did a segment weeks ago about our favorite remake. Um, mm-hmm. That was in my my top five, um, originally by Dolly Parton. And uh, 
does a tremendous, tremendous song with tremendous, tremendous voice. And when I saw that, a thought ran through my head. I was watching Family Feud, which I watch often, and Steve Harvey just bugged out before he ever read the question, how great this question was. The best question ever asked on there. I was like, what is it? What is it? And the question was, who was the greatest female vocalist of all time? Which is a great question. I don't know why he was all that excited, but uh, shockingly, Whitney Houston, if I'm not mistaken, was number one. Uh, to the surprise of a lot of people. And I think she is phenomenal, but I'm not sure if I agree with that. So I, I'm gonna give you my my thoughts on that, and I'll see what you guys think. I don't know how you could put uh Whitney Houston in front of someone like uh Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. Now you can talk about album sales and all other stuff, but it has to be relative. We live in a different time now. You know, um, sales, cable, television, internet, able to get music out all over the world. Whitney had all that, and videos, you know. Whitney had all that to her advantage. Also, the emergence of pop music. But Aretha has something that nobody else can claim. She forged a trail for all women vocalists after her. She forged a trail for going from gospel to, to pop, uh, even operatic music. Um, I don't think there's ever been anybody like her with not only the clarity and beautiful voice, but the power. And I'm a huge on Whitney's voice, man. I just like, oh my gosh, she can sing. But I don't think you can take a, a, a trailblazer and put them behind um, someone who had clearer advantages because of the times. Fishy, what's your thoughts on that? No, I I I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, it, I mean family feuds, it's you know, was it a hundred people or yeah, two hundred right, people right. in the survey? Point, so it, you know, you know, it just depends on the crowd that you're asking uh -huh. and the age and, yep. and that type of deal. But I mean you're right, all things considered, I mean I, I mean uh Aretha Franklin for me is also one of my top yeah. female vocalists of all time. Like you say just from Everything I I hear from her from years and years is just she, yeah. it's just stellar. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. So, like you yeah. said, I think it depends on a lot of the crowd that you're that you're interviewing. But I would not put Whitney Houston number one to 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 answer your question. No, yeah, She's, I wouldn't you know, have a problem with her at at maybe three. You know, sure. Uh, you know, but uh, definitely, I don't think number one. Skinner, any thoughts, brother? Uh, I've got another one that comes to mind before, maybe even before both uh, Aretha and uh, Whitney. Oh, and her, wow. Her name would be Tina Turner. You know, <sighs> you think about her heyday and what she did and the past that she, you know, that she uh, yeah. uh, left. I, with, I have Tina up there. You know. Uh, and I love Tina's voice. I love her voice. Uh, I was I just, never I, really a huge pop fan, but I was a huge Tina Turner fan and what yeah. she stood for and what she, you know, what she represented. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I Whitney Houston had a an angelic voice, and she was very popular during her heyday. But I don't see her as the number one of all time either. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'd put Aretha and even Tina Turner ahead of her. Yeah, um, I, I have to. I love me some Tina. Love me some Tina. Um, she did a little bit of R and B, a little bit of soul. She did some rock and roll. Uh, mm -hmm. Just phenomenal and a unique voice at that. But I don't think I would put her ahead of Whitney. Far as just, I mean, Whitney's voice was just something special. And I'm going to say this about uh, Aretha Franklin. Um, you guys know I teach a music class uh, to to kids, and when we were doing. Uh, music uh in that era and we got to aretha franklin and one of my teenage kids he had never heard aretha franklin before and i play 30 seconds of amazing grace and this was how this kid reacted he went when that happened i was like he gets it he gets it you know what i'm saying very few people can merit that reaction out of you and i don't know of any Tina Turner song that could do that as great as she is. So just my thoughts on that. Um, so that's uh, all I got for sports and music, guys.
So let's get some pop culture, man. Take it away, fish. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll see about Whitney Houston. Maybe had the best rendition of the national anthem, arguably, maybe ever. I, I don't know. In a sporting well, I, event, anyway? It was my favorite. Yeah. It was my favorite. I, I don't know if it was because of the time, what we just went through uh, yeah. as a country, but uh, her emotional content, it was certainly my favorite. Yeah. All things considered, definitely one of the best. Okay, well, we did lose a singer on the on on a sad note here. Yes. Uh, very well known singer uh, from our generation, uh, the great Irene Cara passed away, sixty three year, years of age. So she's still a young woman, yeah, very young. All things considered, so this past Saturday, so we're shooting this on Monday, uh, so just over the weekend. Um, obviously, you know her from the Flashdance movie and the soundtrack. Um, yeah, again, great voice. That song to this day, I tell you, if you if you don't get your foot tapping and feel motivated, mm-hmm. I don't care what you're doing, cleaning the house, yeah. working out, or whatever the hell you're doing, and you hear flash dance, what a feeling! It's just like, you know, it just that song just gets me going every single yeah. time, and, and because of her voice and the whole thing around it. So, uh, she was also, let's see, uh, well, that, that's that's her biggest thing. Obviously, yeah. flash dance was her biggest claim to fame. So. Uh, key thoughts on uh, Irene Kara, sir. Uh, that's part of <laughs> our growing up culture, a huge part of it. Uh, we were young teenagers, and you know, I've said this before every now and then, a movie will come out that just checks every box, just mm-hmm. hits it on the head. As far as the, the, the people in the movie, the soundtrack, the video, and that's what that song did. You know, in that movie, it was a hit movie, it was in our uh, Top Gun. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, teenage movie phase. Uh-huh. Uh, the song was just like, just made you feel good when you heard it, you know? And it was an emotional song. The video was excellent. The dance throughout the video was a dance of triumph. Yeah, I thought it was really, really great. I loved Irene Kara. She just seemed like somebody who was just totally cool. And it was just that one song, that one video, that one movie that made her that cool with us. So uh, I remember... Get coming into junior high school, and we played that song in band. You know, it was that popular. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, sure um, did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that just really sucks. Really, really like Irene Cara. Any to add, Skinner? No, I don't got nothing to add. Like you said, if you you're not stomping your foot or tapping the you know the table with your hand listening to that song, you don't have a pulse. Mm-hmm. I don't care yeah. how old you are or where you're at. <laughs> You know, you don't have a pulse. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Agree. Okay. And as I saw, just I caught in the in, uh, just today. I did not realize this, but uh, the the comedian Sinbad, you know, certainly very popular in the '80s growing yeah. up. He was in, uh, I know, uh, friend Nick and the other podcast. His favorite Christmas movie of all time is Jingle All the Way. Jingle all Always the way. raves about that movie. And yep. Sinbad was in that movie. But I didn't. Re- I did not know that the poor man suffered a stroke uh, a couple of years know. ago, back in 2020, and it was very uh, debilitating for him. And he's been though on the mend and making a uh, you know, learning to walk again. He went home over the, just this past summer. So there's he's been posting some recent uh, social media pictures out there, him and his you know team or whatever, just showing him you know, up and learning to walk again and all that. So I don't know. I just want to just 
you know, mention yeah. that that you know Sinbad. I mean, I was definitely a fan of his uh, his comedy. I thought he was you know pretty funny. Uh, definitely super energetic and all that. Sorry to hear he went through this, but I was glad to see today that he was uh, on the mend and trying to work his way back into walking and hopefully a better, you know, better uh, quality of life for himself here. So that's it. So Keith, any any thoughts on Sinbad or anything here, sir? Yeah, you, you know what would be cool, guys? If we had like an app, if you will, that kept you up to date on celebrity health status. If something goes bad with the celebrity, uh, not just just to know their business, but maybe mm-hmm. people can be praying for them. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep an update, because I had no idea of, of yeah. that as well. Um, we saw, you know, uh, from uh, Love and marriage, love and marriage. Christina Applegate. Christina oh, Applegate. Yeah. You know, yeah. her mm-hmm. situation. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. You know? So um, yeah, I you know, gosh, God bless uh, you know, Sinbad. Now I've always liked Sinbad. I as a comedian, I thought he was a little overrated. I have respect for his comedy because he was a very clean comedian, and I think mm-hmm. it takes a lot more effort to be funny like that. Um not using shock value or anything like that in just everyday life. Um, but I, 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 he wasn't just funny, funny to me. I thought he was great when he was in movies or TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I've always liked him bad. He just seemed like a really, really cool guy. And uh, wish him the best, man. Be praying for him. Yeah, absolutely. Anything to add, Skinner? No, I, I was shocked when you said that he had uh, come down ill. And, you know, I... I know what it's like for someone to have a stroke. I lost my grandmother to a stroke, uh, to a major stroke, and my mom had a huge one, you know, uh, while she was suffering her kidney di- uh, failure. So, you know, for him to be not to be able to walk or have any quality of life from it, and he's now on the men's, you know, do what he that, loves. Brings ch- that brings chills up, you know, up my arms and down my spine, you know, good for him. I don't know him personally. I just know him from the big screen. But to hear somebody, you know, recovering from this, it really warms my heart that, uh, you know, that he's going to be okay from this. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. So, so bad. Our thoughts are and prayers are with you out there, sir. We wish you ongoing recovery. Uh, some stuff in this week in pop culture history, guys, that caught my eye. Um, November the 27th. Now we're shooting this on November the 28th. November the 27th, all the way back in 1924, was the very first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, and three years later, the first balloon in the parade. You'll never would, you know, the trivia, Felix the Cat was the first balloon in the parade. Three years oh, later, I was, was, was going to say Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> okay. That's a good guess. Yeah. I was thinking anyway, Snoopy. So the, yeah, yeah that's probably, good one. probably one of the first ones. Anyway, but it's the parade itself. Obviously, the parade is still on the air every year since. Um, I still watch at least a part of the parade on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, for me, I would enjoy, I don't know, I get excited still as a grown man to see Santa Claus coming down at the end of the parade. Um, I don't know, just something about that, you know, it just... Yeah. Anyway, but the overall, the parade itself, I, I like to see the high school kids. They still bring in a lot of high school bands. Obviously, the three of us were in high school band together. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something that's uh, close to us and our heart. As I love seeing the kids out there performing. But uh, for me, anyway, every float, every single float is tied to some type of TV show advertisement, something like that. It's all selling stuff. Yeah. I don't know. That's just sort of what it's become over the years. So are you a fan of the of the Thanksgiving Day Parade? If so, what are some of your favorite things about the parade still? And if you're not as much of a fan these days, why not? So, Keith, what are your thoughts on the, the, you know, the, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, sir? Well, I was excited when you brought this subject up, and I was glad to hear you say a few minutes ago how you get excited and you see the Santa Claus. Um, life is tough. Life is hard, man. Being an adult's tough. 
you know, the three of us, we, we've, we're adults, you know, we've maintained homes, we've, you know, been married, uh, we've raised children, you know, we handle our business. But one thing I love about us and, and, and our other friends is there are things in our childhood we hold on to yeah. and we refuse to let them go. And I think that is really important in life. You can be a responsible adult, but don't ever let nobody tell you, oh, grow up. Those are the things that help us remember what life's all about. You know what I mean? The innocence of loving something like a parade, the joy. I'm so glad when you brought the subject up. I didn't want to say nothing until we got to it. But I woke up Thanksgiving morning, and I couldn't wait to turn my TV on to catch the parade. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it gave me that feeling again. And I was in Thanksgiving mode after I saw that parade. I only watched about 30 minutes of it, but that was enough. Uh, I love seeing the marching bands. That's part of our history. I love seeing the floats. Uh, you know, some of the people that are on the floats, I don't care for anymore. I don't care about all the commercialism, but I'm trying to learn to block that stuff out and just as a whole, just to see the parades and just enjoy it. But yeah, I get excited when I see all that stuff. It got me into Thanksgiving mode, and now that it's over, I'm getting myself in Christmas mode. I'm going to yeah. be singing Christmas carols. I'm in, you know, all that stuff, and I can't wait for the shows to come on TV. So, yeah, I absolutely love it, man, and I'm not going to let it go. Very good. Skinner, what do you think about the parade? Oh, I'm the same way. It was on Thursday morning. You know, it's on every year. Um, you know, I missed. I've missed one year over the last... 50 and that was when i was uh in chicago when madison uh her her and her bandmates were invited to do the thanksgiving day parade in chicago and mm -hmm. i was on michigan avenue at uh five o'clock in the morning waiting for the parade to start and uh see my daughter march down in the thanksgiving day parade there so that's right madison was a band girl too we yeah she her. was uh, kind yeah, of frost with my son's band, band. Yep. So with that being said, uh, on Thursday, my two-year-old grandson's being a two-year-old playing and this all of a sudden, all of a sudden he just looks up the TV and he stops dead in his tracks. That's what that parade's about. That's what there being a go. kid is about. There that took go. me back, you know, whether it was the sound of a marching band, whether it was a, the pageantry of a float or he saw the, uh, a balloon, I, you know, Whatever it was, yeah, it stopped him remember that feeling it gave you? in his tracks. And, you and I saw just that. look that's at him cool. and I look at the TV and I just smiled. That's all I needed. That's, that's awesome. That's what it was all about. That's freaking awesome, man. Yep. Yeah, that's great. I'm with you. I, I love the balloons still, too. I love the, yeah. all the balloons. Hey, while he's talking yeah. about grandson, we missed a couple of big announcements. First of all, uh, happy birthday to me on the 21st. And then my fellas got birthdays coming up here soon. And secondly, uh, Skinner's a new grandpa, man. So we yeah. want to say congratulations, uh, Ashley. Congratulations. Uh, just excited. I can't wait to get over there and see my new niece and see my old ones, too. But uh, that's just awesome, man. Just want to say congratulations. Yeah, yeah the, uh, what was it, uh, Thursday? So a week, she would, on Thanksgiving, she turned a week old. Uh, but Jay Lee, uh, Jay Lee, uh, 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 is Yeah, she's a week and a half old now. And yes, her name just, is Jay Leah. Keith, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Leah Jean, a, a, a week old, she still got that brand new car smell, <laughs> and she's she's just a precious little thing. So. Yeah, and she looks precious. <laughs> awesome. Oh, but thank okay. you. No, that's great. Absolutely. Congratulations. Uh, okay, back in 1972 on November the 29th, uh, where a lot of this got started. Atari releases the Pong video game. So Pong. Th that spawned the whole video game craze. Um, I remember my parents had like, you know, this, you know, they had an arcade version of Pong. You might remember that barely. Yeah. Uh, but my parents had a TV hookup for that. And I thought that yes. was the greatest yes. thing. Technology. In the world. Our first introduction into technology. Those yeah. two little things with the prongs like this, put them that on the adapter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You plug I it directly into something. the TV. That's right. You plug it directly into the TV. You flip the switch. And it was like, wait a minute. What do you mean we could play a game when on I figured the out television? How to do that, I thought I was a genius. I thought I was a genius. Yeah. yeah. So it, just the innocence of that game. 
you know, to this day, it's still, it, it's still a fun game. It's just so simple. There's definitely some strategy to it with, you know, how you hit the ball and how it, how it ricochets and all that type of stuff. But just the simplicity of it was great. It was great. And, and slicing. You, you, that's right, slicing. And it was a game you could sit down and play with your parents. Uh-huh. And think about how quickly that dissipated over the years that you just <laughs> those games just advanced past our parents so quickly. Yeah. And the games now are just, just rocket speed past what, us what now. What do you mean? What do you, you mean? Know? Truck mode. What do you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> Inter- intercept what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can keep up okay in our generation of gaming all those years. Certainly, we can we can hang. Yeah. But the so the complexities of some of these anymore, it just gets a little crazy. But the simplicity of Pong was terrific, and obviously, like I said, it, you know, the, the next thing you knew, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred came out, and that just took the whole yeah. gaming to an entirely different level. So uh, let me let me tell you what I discovered. Please guys, go ahead on, on mm-hmm. Pong. So I was in love. I never seen anything like this. I could play a game in my room. It was just the greatest thing in the world. And then I made a startling discovery. If you turn your lights out, pitch black in your room, close your curtains up, no moonlight, Mm -hmm. and you turn the brightness all the way up and the contrast all the way down. It was amazing. It was leaving light tracers when you play. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it was psychedelic, man. And I totally loved it. My sister wouldn't play with me no more because I would just destroy her and she got tired of getting beat. So I had to kind of just you know, play both sides by myself, you know, get real good at doing that. But, uh, yeah, that's what I used to do, man. I sit there in pitch darkness. Ooh, ooh. That was my first introduction into to the psychedelic. <laughs> Very good. Well, I, don't gonna derail the, I don't want to derail the subject, but you talk about a game of simplicity. My favorite sim- simplistic game of all time, Space Invaders. Oh, love oh it. great game. Great game. Love it, yeah. You know, great it's game. so simple. It's the same thing over and over again. It just gets some, you know, gradually gets faster. How about a- asteroids? Yeah, and that, but that one, yeah, that one's a little more took a little more thought process with that one. But just sitting there with Space Invaders, just like Pong. I mean, there's a little bit yep. of strategy involved, but doesn't get much more simpler than that. Yeah, but for me, it was Gal- hours Galaga. and hours and hours. I can play Galaga forever. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, with Pong too. I remember it was one of the first games that you could also play against the computer i had the oh okay i, I had the, I, I don't remember if the original console had against the computer but i know that the cartridge i got the a cartridge of pong on the 2600 and it had different variations like hockey and foosball and different things it was all with the you know the basic lines but again you could play right. against the computer with that which was a whole other thing there was i i, I that for me, I think that was the first game to play against the computer that I remember. Yes, was that Fisher's, old Paul. Fisher's but, parents were glad that you could play against the computer when they found that out because they got tired of Fisher and they're playing with themselves. So that was a nice right. that was a nice change. That's right. That's right. In many respects. Okay, and then uh, 2004 already uh, on November the 30th. Can't believe it's been that long ago already. But the longest running win streak on Jeopardy came to an end ken jennings finally lost he had won 74 games in a row oh there's definitely God. been some people that's gave given him a run and they've come at least got in the in the stratosphere stratosphere of that record since there's been a few terrific champions on jeopardy even over the last couple oh my of years gosh. but he won more than 2.5 million dollars uh, in his run, and now fast forward, as you probably know, he's also now a host on Jeopardy. Uh, one of the hosts since uh, Alex Trebek uh, passed uh-huh. on. He actually does a very fine job. So he knows yeah. the game. He's very personable. Uh, he knows his way around. But I remember at that time that was just it. It was amazing. Then. Uh, continues to be amazing, and I even went so. on to play against the computer, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was like the big blue, not big blue, I know it was a chess one, but it chess, was a computer yeah. he played against uh, and uh, lost, but still it was interesting to see all that stuff here. So, 
Anyway, uh, thoughts on Ken Jennings and his amazing run on Jeopardy, Keith? Did you watch it back then? What did you think? Of uh, I caught some stuff, but I think it's an amazing feat because of this. We've seen some incredibly uh, smart people on that show. And, you know, I'm, I'm nothing near a mathematician, but I just wonder what the odds are of winning 74 games. But you, you would think the odds would have caught up to him, not because he's anybody smarter, but just, you know, it's not all about being smart, about, you know, betting. Should I go for a true daily double or a portion? Am I playing against myself or what they got? You know, yeah. it's so many factors. It, it, it's, I, you know, I, I would have bet all my money. No, nobody's going to go 74 games. But uh, I think it's one of the most incredible feats uh, ever. So uh, I saw him in a, uh, I can't recall, it's a TV show or movie the other day. Okay. Yeah, so he's reaching celebrityism. Oh yeah, he definitely has. He's definitely yeah. he definitely made a name for himself in pop culture with that with that run for sure. Skinner, any thoughts on Ken Jennings? Did you watch any of it? What did you think? Oh yeah, so. I was I watched him and his in his run. He's in a he was in a show. I don't know if he still is now, but it's called The Chase. He's one of the guys, um, one of the four guys that you try to beat is with uh knowledge. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ken Jennings. He was incredible. I remember back in the time we didn't think he was going to lose. When he did lose, everybody's all in shock. But you know, I still to this day claim that he he threw it in order to you know pursue other opportunities that were coming to him. His story is just like the movie Quiz Show. You guys ever see Quiz Show? Mm, I know you're talking so. about. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. I thought it one of and one of the most incredible movies. Um, that was Ralph Fiennes was in it, and it's a true story about the uh, quiz show controversy back in the day. Uh, the show that ended up becoming, I forget what the show turned into, uh, but uh, basically the show it had a young guy, Jewish guy from the Bronx, I think, who was winning, 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 and because they were. I guess you could say mapping the audience, mapping the the viewers to see who they want to see when they thought the numbers indicated that they wanted a younger, more handsome looking person. And they made this guy miss a question on purpose. They really screwed him on national TV and he fought back and he would not let this thing go and took it to court. Um, and he ended up winning, but he didn't win. But the, they found the producers had been cheating the show was set up. It brought everybody down. There was this young Ralph Fiennes played a character who kept winning and winning and winning and winning. And the ratings were going through the roof. But they found out they were feeding him answers through a headset. And uh, the crazy thing about it, everybody came crashing down except for the two producers who were cheating. They end up hosting shows years later. Uh, hmm. I forget what shows uh, that became big and popular. So, a uh, great movie, and his story is just very similar. Yeah, very good. Like you said, that all the circumstances around that to win, like you said, that many games in a row, just with the basic talent. I mean, I'm sure he must have had the the ringing in even to an art form, because even that in itself, to hit yeah! that button at the exact right yeah. time to ring out people and get enough of the question that he could answer it, I'm sure all that. I mean, there's so many things go into that uh, win streak. Pretty amazing. I don't know if we'll ever see it beat. We'll see. Uh, okay, in 1997, on December the 2nd. Uh, Hold on. I'm sorry. I got to correct go ahead, myself. Uh, the show was, the game was 21. That was the game. Okay. Okay. On quiz show. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Got it. Sure. Back in 97, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, uh, their first screenplay uh, was Goodwill Hunting. So the movie came out on December 2nd, 1997. Uh, starred Robin Williams and, of course, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck were in it. And with others, the film was nominated for nine Academy Awards, won two. Uh, Robin Williams won for Best Supporting Actor, and they won Best Original Screenplay. The budget was $10 million, and it grossed over $225 million. Obviously made... Uh, Instant stars of Ben Affleck and Matt Damon oh, still have yeah. you know, been in movies and everything ever since. Some big time movies. Um, obviously, Ben Affleck to this day is now Batman in the uh, DC universe and continues to portray that role, even though he said he was leaving. Um, 
Yeah, so just to quite the movie and quite the start for those two young guys at the time here. So, um, but it got me thinking as well. I don't know that I ever saw that movie. So it's a huge, huge movie. I can't recall watching it. So first of all, I want to get your thoughts. If, if you have any thoughts of Good Will Hunting, you talk about that. But I'm also curious, though, if there's any movies out there, and we could talk about it for hours in general, but give me like three to five movies that, you you feel like you for whatever reason people have told you you should see it or you felt in your mind I should see this movie for some reason or another, but just have never gotten around to watching it. Um, just interested in your list. Like I say, you don't need to do as many as you want to, but just you know three to five tops. You know we don't need to do this for a very long time. But uh, uh, Skinner, when we start with you, give me give me maybe just give me we'll go let me just go around. How about that? So right. give give me give me one, and then we'll go to Keith, and then to me, and then we'll just keep doing that for a couple movies. How about that? So give me a movie you think you should have seen by now, but have not. Well, up until yesterday, I had not seen Avatar, mm-hmm. and I was forced to sit in front of the television. I shouldn't say forced. But- forced. Miss Marcy, and, Miss Marcy and, and my stepdaughter Ashley looked at they're like, You're gonna sit here and watch this damn movie with us because you've never seen it. And um I watched it. Good movie, but uh it didn't wow me like it wows everybody else that's seen it back in the day. And like he had made a point that probably seeing it in three D at the theaters was the yes. way to do it. That was so, the way to do it. So that's okay. my first one. When that movie came out, there was no technology like it. Anything no, like it was amazing. It. Now you've seen that technology used. The Avengers series, they use that technology with Thanos and everything else. Um, so that, that's probably why it's not as impressive to you. But uh, I just want to say real quick, Good Will Hunting, one day I said, let me see what this movie is all about. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. I mm-hmm. have watched it so many times. It is incredible dialogue. It is an incredible story. Um, great people in it. I tell you what, to be somebody so funny, Robin Williams plays the best dramatic roles, man. Yeah. And he was absolutely phenomenal in this movie, man. Some of the greatest lines are in this movie. Um, it's a deep movie. It's a funny movie. Uh, ben Affleck was in it. Casey Affleck, his brother, got his debut in it as well. Yep. He's he gone played on his win. brother yeah. in the show, yeah. And uh, uh, Cole Hauser of Yellowstone, he was a kid in this movie. He was great. Uh, Mini Driver. Yeah, Mini Driver. Stellan Skarsgård, uh, who's, you know, mm-hmm. in the Avengers movies. So it was a good movie. All right, so the first movie I'm going to name is, uh, especially being a black person, I'm really ashamed. I have not watched this movie yet. Every time my family or I'm around, a group of black people get together uh, at, like, a holiday or something, somebody's quoting the lines from this movie, and I have not seen The Color Purple. What? Mm. Yeah, I'm ashamed. Really? Yeah. Don't don't, don't get don't get all what with me, Mister. Because I ain't through with what? you. What? Yeah, that's a good movie. <laughs> I'm not an Oprah. I'm not a big Oprah fan in general, but she played a hell of a part in that movie. Yeah. All right, black man, I hear you. <laughs> well, this is one I tell I tell guys I've never seen this movie. And they're like, what? So I will probably get to say I've never seen Scarface. Al what? Yep. I, no, I am so no. done. Hey, nice talking uh, with you guys. I am again, leaving this show. And again. you thought I was bad with Avatar. Yeah, you like, you've a, never seen Scarface. Hey, Skinner, nope. over there, Skinner over there, like, whoo, take the heat off me. You ought to be ashamed <laughs> of yourself, dude. I know. I just, oh, it's not wow. like I, it's not like I don't want to see it. It just, I haven't gotten around to watching it. That's it. So I will watch it. I have some what time off this holiday all season. All the crap you two mooks gave me about Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Art. Don't now you that's... ever say nothing to me again. That's the, uh, I don't know if it's on the, on the level yeah, of not saying yeah, Raiders I, of the Lost Art. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now, listen, yeah, listen Raiders of the Lost Lord. Ark screams Gen X. <laughs> tell, me, tell me what lines do people repeat from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Because I don't know of any, but everybody repeats... I uh, I tell the beast, up, baby. Say hello to my little friend. Come on, man. That movie is ah, God. Okay, you're <laughs> it's your turn, Skinner. I'm, I am so through with you, fish. I can't even talk to you, fish. I can't even look at you. <laughs> Skinner, what's your next one? Uh, next one will be the never seen one second of the movie, uh, but Lord of the Rings. Mm, 
I'm well, telling you, I've never I seen new one. I gotta get I've, new friends. I've never seen one second of that trilogy. Hmm. I've always I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste a day. I'm gonna sit in front of a television and watch these movies from start to finish. And it's like, watch under- don't watch them all at the once. That's don't, don't do but that. At least you understand it. That you gotta watch them together, but don't do it all at once. You can't do it all at yeah. once. But watch one like one day, and then the next day, because you'll be like in that world, and you'll understand where they've gone from. Right. But don't, but don't watch one, and then weeks later watch another one. So you got that idea, right? Shameful as you are. Okay. All right. Uh, my <laughs> second one, uh, another one I'm ashamed of because I'm an old movie buff. I love the old classics. Uh, mm-hmm. Casablanca, without question, is my favorite movie, hands down. But every year when people are asked the question, what's the greatest movie written of all time? There's these two are always in that category fighting for number one. Citizen Kane gets an honorable mention, but I have never seen Gone with the Wind. Me neither. I don't know what I'm going to do with you two. You've never seen Gone with the Wind. No, I haven't. Somebody's nope. a movie buff like you has never seen that damn movie. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's shameful. long. Shameful. It's long. Yeah, Holy crap, know. that's shameful. That's one of those culture things my mom instilled in me was I had to watch that movie. Now I look at him talking tough now. <laughs> Golly, I can't believe. Me, and you too, Fish. I can't believe. I, I, know. With your I, mom, I, I can't believe you've never seen that. Hey, Clark Gable's from right here in Ohio as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm nope. Saying. Nope, never saw it. I, I, I don't think it was one of the. I don't, that's a good point. You mentioned that too. I don't recall that being a movie that my parents really watched, or may, I know they certainly didn't make me sit down on any family night to watch. Mm-hmm. I know that uh, every time so. it was on cable, my mom made us sit and watch it with her. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's okay. okay. Oh, my next one. So yeah, I, well, I, I already kind of mentioned uh, going with the way, but it, not it wasn't on my list. Uh, I have never seen as you, you just mentioned it, Keith. Casablanca. Never seen that movie either. Humphrey oh. Bogart. I know it's another there's, classic movie. There's nothing better, man. Yeah. Some of the greatest. I, I like Humphrey Bogart. All lines. that. It's, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's so. action. It's hilarious. It's mm-hmm. romance. It's the perfect movie, man. Wow. There you go. Skinner, what's your next one? My next one, probably not a surprise to you guys. All, although I do have, between uh, all the kids, I have seven daughters. Is I've never once seen two minutes of the Twilight series. Wow. Yeah, not at all. I have that's no desire of, to see that movie or that series whatsoever. That's a surprise given your situation. Yeah. 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 I've managed all to stay around. away from yep. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All I right. hate, I hate to admit it, but uh, I, you know, I, I would have been like, ah, I want to see this crap, you know, from a distance. And I think who I was dating wanted to watch it, and I was just like, wow, this is awesome. I then somebody they're, told they're awesome. me, if you don't watch Twilight series, you're not going to like the Hunger Games. But I actually watched the Hunger Games, and I enjoyed it. I don't know what that one would have with the other. Hunger Games is incredible by well, itself. It, it, yeah, it, I mean, it's not. They're not obviously one's werewolf, uh, or it, but they said the, being a teeny bopper type. The the movies were meant for a certain group, age group, and yeah. they were both meant for the teenager, or the young group. But I enjoyed Hunger Games. I thought the storyline was pretty good. Yeah. So, okay. Third is right. a lot either. All right, well, my other movie, I've already uh, let the cat out of the bag, and I could have picked a different one, but I think it's important to bring this one up. But I've never seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. Um, and I really need to get to that one. Um, Poster board of Gen X. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah, it's up there. So shame on me. So you haven't seen any of them? Not the, none, none of the trilogy? None of them. None of the, no. none of the, none of the, no Raiders. Mo- and there's a new one coming out next year, you know. Did you know that? Yeah, you have uh, one year, Mister. I have thirty years. I've had thirty years to catch up. You now have one it. year to watch these. Yeah, I know. We're going to the theater to watch it when it comes All out. All right, fair mm-hmm. bet. Fair bet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what you got, Fish? Uh, I've never seen Rebel Without a Cause. Wow, James Dean. 
Neither have huh. I. Yeah. I don't think wow. I've ever seen that one either. I don't know. It just seems like a classic manly type movie. I'm, yeah. I don't, never, never was really exposed to it. Never watched it. There's tons of those classic movies like that I haven't seen that I really should watch. But that, that one just jumped out at me. Yeah. Never saw it. Wow. Skinner? I think uh, hard to admit this one, but I haven't seen the second Godfather movie. Mm. Okay. Now we got to quit. Now we got to stop the first the one. But stop I don't the show and pull it up one. now. Stop the show and start streaming it now. We, <laughs> we, we can't even have another conversation until you watch this movie. Because I can't even say to you, Skinner, I love you, but don't ever go against the family again. Because you don't know what I'm talking about. I've seen the first one. I don't think I've seen the second one. That's sad. Yeah. The third you don't need to see, but yeah, the second one's the second one. I fun. like the third one. I really do, man. You got to see the third one just for the ending scene. Uh, to finish it, yeah. Yeah, but um, anyway, okay. So I got to stay in the classic mode. I've never seen a streetcar named Desire. I haven't either. There's oh, so many of hold those. On. I'm with Let you. me give you a twofer. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Hoosiers. What? Mm, okay. Yep. You being a you like you're not a basketball fanatic, but you're you watch yeah. basketball. You've never yeah. seen Hoosier. Never that's seen That's a Hoosier. good movie. Yeah. yeah, that's one that that's got a feel good story to it. Hmm. Okay. I got what uh, good, old, <laughs> good old Bobby Knight Bobby Knight. I've not seen any of the Star Trek movies since uh, after two. So I watched where I saw Wrath of Khan. All the other Star Trek movies, every single one of them, uh, with the exception of I did see the the Card and Kirk movie. Like we all, I think we saw that together. That was yeah, we saw that one together. Me yeah. and you and Cooper went to see that yeah. together. Uh, and then I did see the reboot, the how first we, one. How are we friends? I know. The Star, Star Trek, for whatever reason, I just never really got super into it. So I, I hope you guys uh, know when the show's over, I got a lot of reevaluating to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I already mentioned on prior episodes, too, the series itself. I don't recall watching one full episode of Star Trek, the original series, which is dumb. I just need to go back and watch it. I just, and, you know, bits and pieces. That's it. Crazy. I know. But I'm a sci fi person, as you know. Nutty. <laughs> Yeah. I can't wait to hear this next one. <laughs> Skinner, do you have any more? Uh, that's all I can admit at this time. I think okay. I'm good. I got Keith, one go last ahead. one. Go ahead. Don't do it. I have never seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Come neither on one of them? now. The uh, Gene Wilder, neither one of them? I, I didn't know there was more than one. I, yeah, the, the Johnny Gene Depp Wilder and the reboot. And Johnny reboot. Depp did one. Yeah, no, I've never seen either one of them. Come on. Wow. Now, the first one, that's that's striking because that first one was on Channel 43 a ton as kids growing up. It yes. was always on. You yeah. turn that channel yeah, on. I, I, that I, watched movie all those channel 40, I watched all those Channel 43 movies too, but somehow never saw that one. Yeah. Which I, one do you I, like better, Fish? Oh, Gene Wilder, the original yeah, one. Yeah, me by, too. By, by Without far. Giant, Giant Depp was just too weird. It, it was just, it was, un, Nick had a good line for that. He said it was it was unnecessarily weird. Yeah, I, I'll bet. I can see that. It was weird just for the sake of being weird. But Gene Wilder, it was, it was just, he purposely made it kind of a weird character. I don't know. He was just so good. I love Gene Wilder anyway. So he just, he made that movie. So yeah, give me the, give me the original, the original Oompa Loompas, the whole, the whole bit. Now, I thought movie. this was a great category. You know what would be <clears> fun <throat> to do? Movies mm -hmm. that we've seen that people would be shocked that we've seen and liked. That's a good one. Yeah, let's, we'll yeah, put, we'll, let's, yeah, we'll let's put a that. pin yeah. in that one. Yeah. Good topic. Yeah, very good. All right, guys. That's that's uh, that's what we got here for this week. Do you have any announcements before we yeah, wrap we it got, up? Yeah, I got one that's been kind of quiet. Um, do got a lot of mixed nut shows coming up. Want to get those dates clarified. Uh, before that, that's my uh, one of my bands. Um, but I have coming up real quick here on December 4th at 4 p.m. 
at the Lincoln Theater in Maslin, Ohio. I will be forming with the Spotlight Entertainment Group. Uh, it's called a Solid Gold Christmas. Uh, Christmas songs from, you know, the Carpenters. And I mean, just a lot of great people who have done some of the classic Christmas songs. But it's going to be a great show of singing, music. Um, so that's uh, December 4th at 4 p.m. at the Lincoln Theater. Um, that's on Lincoln Way in Maslin, Ohio. Uh, All right. $30 VIP seating, $20 to $5 for the main floor and balcony. That's it. All right. Very good. All right. Well, for me, as always, you can uh, listen to me on my other show, Convincing Idiots. Uh, Keith mentioned already with Dean and Nick. Pop culture focus podcast every single week. We also on podcast platforms. That's some Fosco great media topics and, on there lately, man. I've been catching thank you guys. You. Great stuff. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we, one of our topics you mentioned here was uh, we talked about recently uh, comedic actors and dramatic roles. Yeah, I watched and Robin that. Williams yeah. is definitely mm-hmm. on our list. Yeah, I thought about that when you said that. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyways, check us out there, and we're we're going to do a combined episode. You guys are planning to have the yeah. podcast worlds collide for Christmas time. We're planning oh, we're that, so we'll keep everybody posted. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I got. Skinner, any announcements? And you can take us out after that, sir, please. No announcements. Just say a prayer for the Skinner family for this uh, busy week coming up and uh, for the grandbabies uh, for stay healthy. Yeah, keep coming. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, for <laughs> Brian Fisher and Keith Porter, I'm Michael Skinner. We're the guys from Gen X. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care. Stay strong, Gen X. Stay something. <laughs> hey, this is Skinner from It Came From Gen X. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and like, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>